It is always this time of year, the beginning of January, when we see all the commercials about exercise equipment, reduced rates at, to join a gym, or any type of fitness for self-improvement. And it makes total marketing sense, right? Showing these ads right after the holidays when people typically eat more than usual at all of the large family gatherings or holiday parties. So, I joined the group and decided to go to the gym that I've been paying for but never went to. <laughs> and I signed up for a yoga class. It's not hot yoga or intense balance yoga. Just a class for someone like, like me who likes to stretch, to breathe, and to feel good when I leave. I go knowing I am doing something not only for my body, but also for my ruach, for my spirit. And despite only having attended two classes so far, because, you know, it's only January 20th, so... <laughs> Just the notion that I made time in my schedule to do something physical and also mindful was a relief. I was relieved to know that I planned to go, that I went, and I even felt great after. There's something to be said for self-awareness and self-help, where the emphasis isn't on the word help, but rather on the word self. Tonight's Parsha, I will read a few lines that concentrate on the story of the enslaved Israelites. We're all familiar. A people who could not help themselves. A people of great suffering. And God telling Moses to inform them that he, God, will help lead them to freedom. To help them achieve the ability to help themselves. To lead them to the promised land. So Moses says to the Israelites, God will bring you out, of the, out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, save you out of their bondage, and redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And then chapter 6, verse 9 says, So Moses told this to the Israelites, but they did not listen to him, because their spirit was broken, and because the labor was harsh. Well, this line seems simple enough, right? The people didn't listen because they were busy trying to survive day to day. They had no time for hope or for promises that seemed to have no grounding in reality. Moses had brought them messages from God before, but nothing to improve their situation. So they had no reason to think that it would work this time. So what is the subtle message here beneath the surface? If you want to improve people's spiritual situation, First, improve their physical situation. In the book, The Guide for the Perplexed, Maimonides had two aims, the well-being of the soul and the well-being of the body. The well-being of the soul is something inward and spiritual. We all took our breath today. But the well-being of the body requires a strong society and economy where there are fair laws, where poverty can be addressed. We have physical well-being when all our physical needs are supplied. But none of us can do this on our own. Spiritual achievement, he says, is higher than material achievement, but we need to ensure the latter first, for if we lack the basic physical needs, there's no way that we can reach our spiritual heights. Just as in the Torah, the people cannot hear God's message if their spirit is broken and the labor is harsh. So what can we in today's world do to improve the physical in order to achieve the spiritual? What is the action that we can take to help improve the betterment of our society so that others can hear the message or grasp the idea of self-help and self-awareness? In the last two weeks, we have all heard the incredible story of Damar Hamlin. He's the 24-year-old football player who collapsed on the field from cardiac arrest and how the stadium filled with thousands of spectators and how people watching all over the world were transfixed as they hoped for his health and well-being. And then all the news outlets mentioned that this young man had created a charity 
to give back to his community with a toy drive for underprivileged children. That charity had a goal of $2,500 and now has over $9 million. This is an example of someone who wanted to improve society and how society reacted, not only by praying for his health, but by donating to his cause. This is someone who wanted to help his community, making it a little easier for those who have it hard, people who cannot find any inner strength, anything to look forward to. Why? Because their lives are enslaved just trying to get by. Damar Hamlin wanted to ease their burden, even if it was with, with just a toy for a child. There are countless ways we can help others. Countless. But here at Temple, we have many outlets in which to get involved to help our Temple community and our community at large. We are very familiar with our mitzvah day, where we gather in various ways Planning takes a long time. We had a meeting last night where we can gather and help our community around us. We also have a wonderful committee called Sisterhood's and Zoss Caring Community made up of temple volunteers, which extends help for those of our members who need it, whether it be a meal at Shiva, a quart of soup in Hala when someone is sick, initiating a meal train, or maybe just a phone call to check in. At our, at our High Holy Days, we talk about giving to the Akron Food Bank. We have our local JCBA, our Jewish Federation. There are so many ways in which to help improve our society. And all, is, are we, all we are asking is what we are familiar with, tikkun olam, right, to repair our world. If we can help make it easier for others to sustain themselves physically, then, and only then, can they and maybe we find spirituality. So tonight, I leave you with the message that by giving to others, by reaching out in your own special way, whether it's donating your time, donating your money, or joining a temple committee for the well-being of our membership and the world around us, maybe you can help others see the possibilities of a life where the labor is not harsh, and where their spirit can heal. It is then that we can begin the journey to repair ourselves, beginning this January and continuing for the days and weeks to come, spiritually, mindfully, and maybe one yoga class at a time. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>